Hi there, and thanks for joining me as we talk about the angiotensin II receptor antagonists. Losartan, candesartan, and other sartan drugs are angiotensin II antagonists, or in other words, angiotensin II receptor blockers. Angiotensin II antagonists are the best alternative for someone who's not able to tolerate the ACE inhibitors because of that dry cough that they often cause. They're very valuable in the treatment of hypertension, but they're also very valuable in the treatment of many different uh, chronic renal disorders and also uh, chronic congestive heart failure. The angiotensin II receptor blockers block angiotensin II, which is a very, very potent stress hormone. And angiotensin II increases blood pressure by many different mechanisms and also uh, remodels the glomerulus, the blood vessels, and the heart wall. So they're very important drugs and very important that you understand those drugs. And if you understand the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system and what angiotensin does, it's going to be a lot easier to understand these drugs. So let's do it. In our lesson about the ACE inhibitors, we went into some detail about the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. And we're just going to have a summary of that right here. When the blood pressure is too low at the level of the kidneys, or if there's too little salt, or if there's a fight-or-flight response, the adrenaline response, the kidneys are going to release renin. So renin goes through the bloodstream, and finds angiotensinogen and cleaves it, enzymatically cleaves it to angiotensin 1. The angiotensin 1 is still not a very active hormone, but when it meets up with angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE, the angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2, which is that super stress hormone. Angiotensin II directly stimulates the kidneys to hold more water, keep more water in the system. Angiotensin II binds to the endothelial cells across the body, yielding a very potent vasoconstriction. And that vasoconstriction eventually leads to chronic remodeling changes in the blood vessels. Angiotensin II contributes to the ventricular remodeling, so the remodeling of the heart. It binds to the receptors on the adrenal gland, promoting the secretion of aldosterone, the salt saver. And as the aldosterone goes through the kidneys, it's going to save more salt and along with it save more water, increasing, once again, the blood pressure. And then finally, angiotensin II stimulates the pituitary gland to release ADH, or antidiuretic hormone, which is the water saver. And water saver, of course, that's going to raise the blood pressure as well. There's no doubt that the angiotensin II receptor blockers can be very valuable and beneficial for a number of different disorders, but it could actually take a bit of research to find the ideal member of that group of drugs for the individual, because they vary a lot. These drugs actually vary quite, quite extensively. Uh, a lot of them have uh, very big differences in the amount of blood pressure control, and some of them improve insulin sensitivity, and some of them improve uh, male sexual dysfunctions. So it may take a little bit of research to find the ideal drug for the individual. Some of the most serious adverse effects include low blood pressure, and high blood potassium. 
especially if they're combined with ACE inhibitors or potassium sparing diuretics. None of the angiotensin receptor blockers should be used in pregnancy because there is definitely evidence of fetal abnormalities.